Despite it being one of the most popular gimmick matches in all of WWE, the Elimination Chamber has played host to some terrible booking decisions over the years, perhaps more so than any other stipulation-based pay-per-view. With 20 years of Chamber history to draw from, there's no shortage of bizarre moments that have left fans frustrated or scratching their heads following Chamber matches. So in this video, we're looking at 9 times the wrong wrestler won the Elimination Chamber match. Starting with number 9, Roman Reigns 2018. Reigns might be the most despised superstar on the roster today, but it was a different story back in 2018. He was still despised by the fans, only for very different reasons. This was the height of Reigns' nuclear push despite the crowd rejecting him at every turn, so it was only a matter of time before Reigns added a chamber win to his list of accomplishments. That year, it was Braun Strowman who the fans rallied behind, and when the monster of all monsters eliminated five of the competitors single-handedly, it looked like WWE might finally give in to fan demand and stop pushing Roman Reigns down our throats at every opportunity. But it didn't work out that way. Reigns and Strowman ended up as the final two, but after three Superman punches and two spears, Reigns picked up the win to a deafening chorus of boos. It should have been Strowman's time, but WWE's stubbornness knew no bounds. Number 8, Alexa Bliss 2018. That's right, both Elimination Chamber matches in 2018 were awful. And what made the awfulness even more disheartening was the fact that this was the first ever women's Elimination Chamber. After a long and tiring championship reign by Alexa, the Elimination Chamber offered WWE the perfect opportunity to crown a more beloved champion in either Bayley or Sasha Banks. But instead, we saw Bliss retain the title, much to fans' disappointment, thus resulting in a forgettable match with Nia Jax at that year's WrestleMania. This historic bout could have been used to massively heat up the women's scene, but just as we saw in the men's chamber match that year, WWE opted to play it safe rather than take a risk. Number 7, Triple H 2005. As far as star power goes, the 2005 Elimination Chamber match at New Year's Revolution might have had the most stacked roster of all time. The vacant World Heavyweight Championship was on the line in a match between Triple H, Batista, Edge, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, and Chris Benoit, along with Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee. With two members of Evolution in the match and Triple H's longtime best friend as the guest referee, the storytelling opportunities inside this chamber were endless. Any of the competitors would have made a viable winner, but the disappointment was in the air when Triple H pinned former Evolution stablemate Randy Orton to kick off his unnecessary 10th world title reign. In fairness, the win did plant seeds for Batista's eventual face turn, but at this point it was obvious that Triple H would be holding the belt until WrestleMania 22 four months later. That meant we'd be treated to several months worth of exhausting 20-minute Triple H promos on Raw, something every fan was long sick of at the time. Number 6, Bobby Lashley, 2006. December to Dismember. The revived ECW pay-per-view that hosted the 2006 Elimination Chamber match was apparently so bad that ECW mastermind Paul Heyman broke down in tears once it ended. The same year, WWE had resurrected the corpse of ECW to fill their third brand slot, and their attempts to make the corpse dance on the big stage was met with indifference from most fans. The 2006 Chamber had a hardcore vibe to it, with each pod containing a personalized weapon for each superstar. The match involved ECW legend Rob Van Dam and scrappy underdog CM Punk. Two stars that the old ECW fans could root for. But it also involved Bob Holly, Test, Big Show, and Bobby Lashley. Four people that did not fit the ECW mold at all. 
With RVD and Punk being eliminated early on, fans turned on the match and began voicing their disapproval. To add salt to the wounds, Bobby Lashley, a shredded monster with absolutely no connection to the original ECW, won the title to chance of we want refunds from the hot crowd on hand. The fault of this one lies purely on the writers, because they should know better than to piss off ECW fans. It's a small miracle that Bobby Lashley didn't end up buried underneath chairs by the time the show went off the air. Number 5, Jack Swagger 2013 Jack Swagger, or Jake Hager as he's known nowadays, shouldn't be winning anything. And he certainly shouldn't be winning matches that involve Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, Kane, and Daniel Bryan. But in 2013, Swagger was the lucky recipient of a major push to the top, and for reasons that we still don't really understand to this day. It kind of makes sense with a little mental gymnastics, because Swagger was a legitimate tough guy who had since had a lucrative career in mixed martial arts. But in the WWE landscape, he was a charisma vacuum, whose in-ring skills paled in comparison to guys like Jericho and Bryan. Fans were praying that Brian would pick up the win in this chamber match and go on to main event WrestleMania, but Swagger ended up victorious, much to the fans' dismay. To make matters worse, Swagger was busted for drug use a few weeks later, which derailed his push and ultimately made the win inside the chamber worthless. Number 4, Ryback, 2015 we can't talk about disappointing matches without mentioning Elimination Chamber 2015. History has since called this the worst Elimination Chamber match of all time, and it was all punctuated by an unwanted victory by everyone's favorite Goldberg wannabe, Ryback. Rusev was meant to be in the match, but got injured beforehand, only to be replaced with an unprepared Mark Henry. Henry's pod accidentally broke during the match, forcing the participants into a state of confusion. Multiple moments saw competitors awkwardly standing around because a number of botches muddled the layout of the match. Even the commentary team were scrambling to find excuses for the lack of action, and to top off the disappointment, Ryback eventually walked away with the Intercontinental title. The 2015 match was slammed so hard that WWE didn't even hold an Elimination Chamber match the following year at all. There's an argument to be made for 2015 being the worst Chamber event in history, and it's a damn good argument. Number 3, John Cena, 2011. Throughout 2011, WWE were really struggling for star power. Going into that year's Elimination Chamber event, The Miz was world champion, and that pretty much says it all. John Cena, Randy Orton, and Edge were all viable contenders to Miz's title, but CM Punk had fast become the most overact in the company. But this Elimination Chamber match, Cena ran through the competition, eventually beating Punk for a clean and unneeded victory. This meant that Cena went on to face The Miz at WrestleMania 27 in one of the worst Mania main events of all time. Punk and Cena didn't have their much anticipated and then much loved match until Money in the Bank 2011, but the same result could have been achieved if Punk had won this chamber match, lost at WrestleMania, and then finally bested Cena at Money in the Bank. Number 2, Brock Lesnar 2022 before Triple H took over Creative in summer 2022, it seemed that we were fated to see Roman Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar main event every WrestleMania until the end of time. That's why it was no surprise to see Brock Lesnar steamroll the competition in that year's chamber match, taking out Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Matt Riddle, and Austin Theory in record time and securing himself not just a main event spot at Mania, but the WWE Championship for a seventh time too. Sure, the in-ring quality was absolutely fine, as you'd expect from competent guys like Lashley, Rollins, and Styles, but it was pretty clear from the start that no one other than Brock had a chance in hell of winning. 
It was frustrating for fans to see guys like Styles and Theory get fed to the beast, but all because WWE had not built anyone else up to be a worthy contender to Roman Reigns' championship. We had to see this again. But if there's one good thing about this recent disappointment, it shows just how much WWE has changed since Vince McMahon was forced out of creative. And now he's back. Number 1. Triple H 2003 since this list is about questionable booking decisions, it's only natural that Triple H's name comes up a few times. This marks his second entry on this list, and this one might be the worst case of the wrong person winning the chamber match in history. In a match that featured not just Triple H, but Jericho, Shawn Michaels, Randy Orton, Kevin Nash, and Goldberg, there were tons of opportunities for unpredictability and excitement. Triple H was the world champion going into this chamber, and fans had become exhausted with his seemingly never-ending reign. Going into it, betting odds were in Goldberg's favor since he was the hottest act in WWE at the time, but Triple H ended up getting the victory after some interference and a sledgehammer shot. It completely derailed Goldberg's momentum and arguably killed what should have been a historic run for the WCW legend. That's why Triple H's chamber victory at SummerSlam 2003 takes our number one spot on this list. That concludes our list of the top 10 times the wrong WWE wrestler won the Elimination Chamber. Were there any other major duds in Chamber history? Let us know in the comments below.